Well, good morning, everybody. Steve Jensen, Dr. J from the National Sales Academy and Impact Training. And today is our final run-throughs on the next, uh, next week or so of See More People. And as you all know, uh, Impact Training and the National Sales Academy, we specialize in conversion and sales and lead management and making sure that we make the sale. But one of the big things that everyone's been screaming for is to make sure that they not just get leads, but they also get quality leads which they can convert. So it's just uh, was a great idea by Jamie. And actually, Jamie is going to be joining us today. He said, well, why don't we actually talk about getting some leads and have uh, some some people share some of their ideas. And over the last, what, nearly um, you know two months, we've just had the, the gurus on, and Jamie is one of them, sharing how to create more leads and qualify. But today, today is something that I'm absolutely going to be taking tons of notes on and I suggest you do too. What we're going to do now is we're going to actually have Jamie t teach us how to ethically spy on our, mar our, our, our marketing competitors. In other words, we're going to find out what they do at works and um, then you can actually do copy. I think it's called copycat marketing. Marketing. So I'm going to throw it over to the guru, Jamie. Um, let us find out some of these secrets of the trade. Oh, thanks, Steve, and good day to everybody uh, who's uh, here with us now, Christina and Joey and Darren and uh, everybody who watches after this. You know, I like to start with asking anybody in sales, what is the Christian name of the person responsible for lead generation in your business? Now, if there's any hesitation, if you can't immediately come up with that, uh, you've probably got a problem. And then I like to ask that person, what's your budget? And if they hesitate, if there's any hesitation to that, then you've probably got a problem, a lead gen problem. So, uh, but this morning there are three topics we're going to jump into, and uh, and I don't profess to be an expert. As a matter of fact, one of the secrets, most empowering things, you know, a lot of us suffer from. Uh, what is it? Um, you know, when we don't think we're the expert. Um, uh, there's a name for it. Uh, you know, we don't think we're good enough to sell Imposter out. Imposter syndrome. Uh, yes, thank you, Darren. Imposter syndrome. That's exactly the what I was looking for. And I've learned that you don't have to be the world's expert on anything. You just need to be able to take somebody a, a few steps forward from their pain to their paradise. You know, and uh, if you can lead them a few steps forward, you're delivering incredible amount of value. Some, sometimes the experts overcomplicate it. But here we're going to, this morning, we're going to jump into three separate issues. And uh, you might say, gee, I want to learn a lot more about what Jamie exposed me to. Uh, and so um, you may want to go way beyond and uh, good on you for doing that, you know. So uh, if anything, you know, this is just a quick awareness sessions on three things that marketers or lead generators should be aware of. So hopefully it's helpful for people to not just increase leads, but quality leads. So they end up with more conversations, as you say, see more people and make more sales. Yes, look, uh, we sometimes ask for advice in this area quite regularly. People say, oh, what do I do? What do I do? But a lot of people take the advice they don't write it down and don't do anything differently. So guys, what I'm going to say here is Jamie's going to share some uh, real gold. He's going to be able to show you how to um, double your leads and uh, with a very small investment. Plus he's also going to be able to show you how to stop having your account shut down. And that is very costly. Don't just sit here and listen pass uh, passively today, write stuff down because Jamie doesn't move super fast because he likes to do the repetition. He is an international presenter. But it's what you're going to do with this that makes the difference. You know, uh, I, I see a lot of people listening, but not doing a great deal. So uh, this is just a bit of a wake up call before I cut him loose. All right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, Steve. I mean, here's a lovely little gem I learned. You know, if you want to get good at internet marketing, online marketing, and whatever like that, is spend more time each day creating content than consuming content. How about that? Yes. Spend more time each day creating content, you know, blogging and YouTube and more like that than consuming other people's content on the Instagram and blah, blah, blah. So mm. that's just a rule of life. Now, uh, I'm going to, as you know, I'm sort of early at this stuff. So I'm going to try and um, juggle into uh, presenter mode. Am I sharing my screen? Yep, there we go. And there we go into PowerPoint. And then I simply click... Uh, 
uh, play from start, slide share, and can you see my screen? You got it. Great. Okay. And uh, I do have a bit of a dodgy mouse. So we're going to start with this topic of how to ethically spy on marketers and competitors. And I suppose uh, a question we should ask is, wh why would you want to do that? Firstly, um, I think it's always good to concentrate on your customer, not your competitors. But you can definitely learn a lot from your, your competitors. Uh, what they're doing in the marketplace. And typically, it's very, very little. So often I go to a fitness club's um, website, they don't even have Facebook pixels installed. So they, they have no clue of tracking who went to their website uh, so that they can remarket to them. You know, they're just wasting so many leads, you know, wasting so many sales simply because they are not tracking it. And they might, or they might have the pixels installed, but not doing anything with it. Uh, so it's good to be able to see what either other people in the same businesses are doing, um, but also what other marketers are doing. You know, what was the thing when um, uh, when the airlines wanted to figure out how could they turn around planes faster to, you know, because they only get paid when planes are in the air. Will they learn from other airlines or who turns around vehicles faster than anybody else. Of course, it's the Formula One pit crews. They fill them up, change the tires, you know, um, do everything in 20 seconds. You know, the, those guys, have they done PDR practice drill rehearse? <laughs> you had better believe it. <laughs> you know, it, it's a pretty dangerous environment with fuel going everywhere and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, that, um, but they, so they learnt from, um, from others. So that's a good thing to learn, you know, to learn from others doing it. So firstly, ethical spying. Firstly, you know, open up Facebook on, on a desktop, not on your mobile, um, and open up uh, whoever you want to look at, open up their business page. So let's go for a quick look. Uh, and I decided rather than looking at a fitness club, let's look at one of the, the best in digital marketing. And this is a page called Digital Marketer. You know, if you it's a fantastic podcast, you know, if anybody, uh, you know, is on the learning curve of digital marketing, you know, always keeping you up to date because it's not, it's not what you know, but are you staying up to date? So uh, definitely I recommend that anyway. So let's say you search for whoever you think is good at marketing or doing something or a competitor, then scroll down and you'll see this little block called page transparency. I don't know why they call it that. And you can simply click see all. And then um, you will click go to add library. Uh, now you'll, if, if it's an American company, they may or may not be advertising in Australia or New Zealand or, or uh, uh, Christina, where's she from? I think it's Portugal. Portugal, okay. So you may have to filter down by your country to see people in your country, but it's it's useful, um, you know, if they're, let's say, advertising from the States, going there. Um, what a lot of fitness club operators in Australia aren't, and New Zealand aren't aware of is that increasingly there are online fitness operators from the United States and weight loss provides the United States targeting your customers in downtown Double Bay or uh, Prospect South Australia or you know somewhere in Perth. You know, so there are online uh, marketers with online fitness and weight loss programs running Facebook ads in your suburbs right now. So it's happening right now. So it's not it's not the competitor you can see, but it's the competitor you can't see. But by going to their ad library, <laughs> well, you can see what they're doing and you can see if they're doing in your area. So, so here's a whole bunch of ads. Now it's interesting, digital marker, marketer don't have one ad. I think they've got about 20 ads running at any one page because they are constantly testing and measuring, testing and measuring which one gets the highest response, you know, which one leads to more opt-ins, which one leads to more sales. So, uh, you know, and, and so here you can click. Um, now I've, I've got I've saved this to my PowerPoint, so I'm not going to click it. But you can click see more, uh, not not learn more. That's going to take. Oh, see add details. I beg your pardon. See that button there. See add details. So you can read their copy. 
Um, so here you can see um, this is a video ad. So some are image ads. This is a video ad. And you can see, ah, they've embedded a headline in the video. So see five types of lead magnets. That's all part of the video. They may even have captions on the video. Notice how if you click the learn more button, that will take their landing page, but they've inserted the landing page uh, way up in the second line of the copy. Um, and, you know, they would test those um, headlines like five types of lead magnets any business create. So having a number in a headline often grabs more attention. If you go to, if you want to learn about headlines, go to a uh, news agent and look at, you know, all those magazines, particularly, um, you know, who, or, 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 you know, the, like a junk sort of tabloid magazine. And often in the headlines, they'll have three ways to do this, five, blah, 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 secret about this. You know, so those guys who write those, um, they want to sell magazines, they want you to pick it up. They are excellent at headline writing. So that's a good tip. Just go to the news agent and, and just look at them and see if you can transfer that headline to your business because it's all about getting clicks, getting attention. Uh, and you'll also notice if you see our details, you'll notice that some are short copy, which means hardly any text, and some are super long copy. I come across ads that are like 500 or 1,000 words long. And people say, nobody's going to read that. <laughs> I mean, people just, uh, you know, and I think in this Instagram world of click, 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 you know, we think nobody's going to read that. I guarantee I could create a headline uh, in a small type with a thousand um, thousand word ad and I could guarantee Darren Roberts is going to read the entire uh, text of that ad. What would the headline be? All about Darren Roberts' sex life. <laughs> so, so you see, it's a case of, you know, is it of interest to them? Gee, what am I looking for? Uh, look at this. I mean, here's an example. I actually did celebrate my birthday last week and my oldest friend who has been a friend for over 60 years, she uh, came to visit us for lunch and she gave me this card. And she watched me open the card and I read everything that she wrote. And she was looking for my reaction. Do you know what I did not read? I actually didn't read the pre-print of the words, you know, with the joke. She was waiting for my reaction to the joke. I was more interested in the personalised stuff. Theorist Jane, she calls me. So, you know, people are interested in what interests them. And, and, and I, I thought, gee, isn't that lovely? She said, but didn't get the joke? Oh, there's a joke in there. I didn't even read it. So, you know, people respond to different stuff and you just got to test it. it. And so the market doesn't care what you think, what you believe, you know, what you read, you know, whether you're visual or you read a lot or not. It's, it's a case of jumping into the world um, and really, you know, entering the conversation that's going on in their mind. Okay, let me repeat that. Entering the conversation that's going on in the mind. So they're, they're not talking about... Uh, the marketer is not talking about their product. They're talking about their target um, prospective customer's problem. And you'll notice that in copy that, that that's what they're talking about. You know, the, and, and that's why sometimes it's really good to look at your own post but, you know, or, or your comments. And, and even in the gym, people, you know, comments members say to you or questions they ask, common questions they ask. You know, you want to reflect those questions. They are pure gold in their words, you know. Uh, may not be proper English or grammar, but you really want to listen to that stuff in developing your copy. Keep notes of that. Um, so there's lots to learn from when you go to your campers or other marketers. And if they can, and if they continue running the same ad, you could go back a month later or a year later, they say, that's... The Gee, they're lazy. They're still running the same ad. Guess why? Because it converts, you know. And definitely, we're always trying to beat our own ads. You know, we're doing Facebook ads in the weight loss market. We're always trying to beat our own ads. But we've got ads that we created literally eighteen months ago, and some of our partners just refuse to stop running them because they just outperform, 
you know, some some other ads. So let's sort of jump in. So check out there. Yeah, I'm just come ask you a question there. Oh, yes, Steve. That, that uh, ad that you did 18 months ago. Yeah. The reason that it works so well, is it the headline or is it the copy? Uh, uh, I, I'm just not that smart to really know, Steve. Um, uh, there's definitely, there's no doubt the headline, and and also prior to the headline is the audience who you put that ad in front of, you yeah. know, your budget, uh, fr the frequency, the reach, and and things like that. Um, you know, whether you uh, create a post out of it to get a whole lot of likes and shares and social proof, then use that paid post ID as your ad. That's a little uh, tech tip there. Um, so. Uh, uh, so really, I don't know, but and sometimes you won't have the answers to all questions. And, and definitely today, I think increasingly consumers aren't responding to just one thing. They'll go there, they'll read comments on your Facebook page or your Instagram page. They'll go to your website, read a blog, do a Google search, read Google reviews. So, so there are some that will respond straight away and come in and join or buy or whatever like that. But there's a lot of people who will hover around because in the beginning when they see their ad, so, so think of this, they may be problem aware and, oh, you address this problem. They may or may not be solution aware, which means, oh, I didn't know you could solve that problem. They may or not, may not be your solution aware or your brand aware. Oh, I've never heard of these guys, Diet Flex, Health Inspiration, whatever like that. That was a shameless plug, by the way. And, uh, uh, you know, I've, I haven't heard of that or your specific solution, you know. So there's there's the consumers going through a whole heap of stuff. Uh, at the top of the funnel, TOF, TOF, um, they, they're a cold market. They don't know, like, or trust you. Sure, you're going to get a percentage of those, um, but you want to move to the middle of the funnel. So you need nurture campaigns to – but we'll get into that anyway. Okay. Um, so let's get back to spying, um, share screen. Oh, gee, I wish I was good as Steve Jensen at this this stuff. So check out the image, the text on, on the image, the headline, the copy, the CTA, the call to action. You know, what do you want them to do? Where are the, You definitely don't want to just send them to your homepage. That's pretty useless unless you've got some pretty good opt-in there. Uh, so you, So the next step is that you actually do click their learn more button and you go, go through to the landing page. Now, landing page is often called a squeeze page, which means it doesn't have your home menu. It doesn't have leakage points where you can go or click around and read the blog and all that sort of stuff. It is all about the offer. And, and, and marketers test landing pages. Firstly, the landing page has to look and feel the same as the ad. Otherwise, you're going to get a high bounce rate. People say, oh, this is spam. This is nothing like the ad I clicked. So we like to use the same image or same video or you know, have the same look and feel um, and, and repeating the same offer. You know, opt in here, you'll get that. Uh, and, and we may have a whole lot of testimonials, a whole lot of copy. And again, you can test... Uh, short copy um, landing pages, which is an opt-in, a long page. Uh, and definitely here's a tip for all marketers, anything you design on the website, you know, on, on, for online, uh, you, you have to design it for mobile. It, you know, test it on Android, test it on an iPhone, you know, um, don't even bother looking at it on a desktop almost. You know, if it doesn't work on, um, on mobile, it ain't gonna work. You know, so, cause in excess of 50% of people will go to your landing page on a mobile device. And the top marketers, and I, I follow my own advice, I go to the top marketers, I look at their landing page on a desktop and then look at a landing page on my iPhone and they've taken a whole lot of elements out. So they've got an abbreviated version on um, on the uh, landing page. And with you know software nowadays, you can create um, uh, a landing page that knows if the person's looking on a desktop or looking on a um, on a mobile device, you know, so it adjusts automatically, you know. But that's something that you you want to be aware of. Um, just uh, if I'm already spinning people's wheels, remember we had a previous version on mm -hmm. who not how. Yes, great don't try don't spend twelve months trying to figure this out because you're losing sales. You're losing sales opportunities. I'm going to jump in here. I think what you're saying is spot on here, Jamie. Um, 
uh, it's the it's getting the right who. Uh, sometimes you find you got the you've got that person, but it's the wrong who in place. And uh, something that I've, I actually got that book and I've listened to it now uh, three times, and I feel that it's it's, uh, it, it's lots of actually on the audio it actually have scenarios as well throughout the old book. So I think it's a good idea. But you said something earlier, Jamie, you have an ad that's been running for 18 months mm -hmm. that have significant results. Now, um, when people actually work with, uh, let's say, Diet Flex or Keto Fitness, um, am, I, am I telling a secret here? But but you give them that that for free? Absolutely, sure. We provide we provide the ads. We provide the landing pages. We provide the you know the lead delivery system so that the salesperson, as soon as that person opts in, it pops up in the salesperson's hey, phone. Look, I'm just, I'm just, oh, yeah, you, you got to get all the stuff right. And the, the marketing is a chain. You, you don't want to have a weak link in that chain. And it's got to be tested. It's got to be monitored, tested, tested, tested. So, uh, which is uh, companies call that QA or quality assurance. You know. You know, are uh, uh, the pixels are uh, their pixels firing? All that sort of stuff. So, yeah. so we, we act we act as a who. You know, we say, look, if you, you, you could spend twelve months figuring this out, uh, just start making sales with us straight away. If you want to leave us in three months because you got it all figured out, you know, you design your own weight loss program. You know, you design your own ads. That's fine. You know, uh, that's that. But uh, we, we, you know, we. Um, we know that just having a weight loss program ain't enough. Um, you know, we've got to help people attract customers, and uh, so they can help people lose weight. So, well, the people in the fitness industry, in particular, but also outside the industry, if uh, we usually do it at the end. But I'm just going to be, jump the gun here. You've said three big, big things here. We've looked at the other people's websites. We, we've looked at their ads now. Um, well, uh, they're doing a lot of testing and so forth, and you've got some ads that have just been knocked. Not knocking uh, uh, all breaking all records, and he said, "Well, hang on, I think we're not going to change it because it works." Well, then we actually talk about is the who. Oh, sorry, sorry. Let me just stop you there. Uh, we keep on challenging it with other ads to test, see if we can get a better result, and and results do go up and down, and you know the the, the whole environment, internet environment, sort of changes is always changing. So we're constantly testing, measuring to see yeah. if we can beat that result. So. I'm big on finding people that are doing it right and actually doing, doing that sort of stuff on a regular basis. I'm just going to shout out to everybody. If you actually want to have a change in what you're doing without having to go through all the courses and so forth, Jamie, and, uh, you know, a lot of you go through, uh, have a, just have a consult, just a chat with Jamie. He's not going to charge you anything, but see if he's got what it's a fit because it's going to Oh, no, no, we're now charging $500 a chat. <laughs> no, <I'm> sorry, you <laughs> should. <laughs> but right, right now, they can have a chat for free. Okay. All right, let you go, mate, because I'm going to let you. Yeah, sure. Okay, okay. let's let's plow into it. And and Christina and Joey, if you know, if they want to interrupt, they got questions. You know, please, uh, you know, love to hear from you. So yes. uh, let's keep on going. We've got plenty to share. So um, hopefully, this is making sense, and I'm not talking gobbledygook or or whatever like that. So. Um, and then you want to check out their sales funnel. The other day, you know, a leading internet marketer on YouTube, uh, you know, and I was on his email list and, you know, I got a time-bound offer. Uh, it was, probably wasn't a time-bound offer for the whole world, but just a time-bound offer for me where I suffer from FOMO, fear of missing out. And, uh, you know, this guy is so good. I said, you know, this is something I need. So... In testing the sales funnel, I didn't go all the way through his sales funnel. I went through the sales funnel and bought. I purchased, you know, you know, because I wanted to invest in me, you know, and uh, learning more. So we're investing time and money. Um, and I'm really delighted I did because he explained how his, his sales funnels work. You know, and a good sales funnel will get the customer to pay your ad costs. Could you imagine having an ad budget of five dollars a day, or fifty dollars a day, or a hundred dollars a day, but the people who purchase pay your ad costs? I mean, isn't that isn't that interesting? Getting the people who purchase to pay your ad costs, and that's definitely absolutely doable. You know, so that you know, uh, you know, some people we know when they join a join a club, some people will buy a thing of protein powder, 
that's paying extra. Some will buy a PT package. Some will buy a weight loss program, which is like 12 months of coaching it, which is like $1,600. So, um, you know, it, but if, if you, if, if you just want to, well, gee, sell them a cheap membership and run away, you know, tail between your legs, um, you know, you're missing so many sales opportunities. So, um, but so it's good to check out their sales funnel, which is their landing page. You opt in, what happens then, you know, um, uh, let's say you ignore them. Do you get follow up emails? You know, do you get, you get into a nurture sequence? So it's really good to, um, mo monitor that. As a matter of fact, one of the tips I, I learned is if they, if they've got a video ad, transcribe it in handwriting word for word, exactly every, write it down, pen and paper, stop the video. Oh, we said that, said that. I wonder why I say that. Maybe it's trying to pre-handle kill objections, you know, because these guys uh, and ladies, you know, they, they are terribly clever. They're doing this all the time. Jamie, uh, that's a really good idea. If people want to do that, what I'm going to suggest, you go to Word, yeah, play the video, mm -hmm. and click Dictation on Word, huh. and, it will, and it will actually write it for you. I did not know that. <laughs> so there, <laughs> there you yeah, go. Let's get Word document. Wow. You're going to be on the internet, obviously. So, yeah. You get the video started. You go up to the top right-hand corner. This is Dictation. Fantastic, it, and it writes everything for you. There you oh, go. That is pure gold. Pure that that was worth me being here to listen to you say <laughs> that. Pure gold, God. Okay. See, I'm too old for this stuff. It's fantastic. Oh. Okay. <laughs> no, you're not. Bloody hell! Keep going, mate. Bloody okay, gold. fine. Pure gold. Thanks, Steve. Uh, boy, uh, I've taken note of that. Uh, oh, sorry. I was going to say, and look, you know, karma. Do not copy them word for word. You know. Just but learn their processes, learn what they're doing, and use your own words. Be authentic. Okay, so don't go and copy somebody's website or landing page. You know, just learn from it and say, ah, this is long copy. They're addressing you know needs and wants and entering the conversation in the consumer's mind. Here are three objections that they're pre-handling in the cop sales copy on the Facebook ad. You know, so what are the common objections our salespeople get? What would happen if we pre-handled them in the ad before they even get to speak to a salesperson? Mm. You know, so, uh, and what is it, time, money, spouse, all that sort of stuff, you know? Will you rip me off, you know, do I feel safe? Uh, you know, will be, people be looking at me? Whatever, you know, whatever they are. Um, so go and speak. So the, whoever writes, writes the ads should go and interview the salespeople. And say, what are your objections? What are people saying? What are their concerns? You know, what are they worried about? What do they lose sleep over? You know, what are the hot buttons? So marketers need to learn from salespeople. Um, so let's move to step two. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I just want to give everybody the heads up that it's not a person that that cancels or shuts down people's Facebook ad accounts. When I say Facebook ad accounts, of course, face, every, we all know Facebook and Instagram. When you use the Facebook ad manager, unless you tell them not to, it's going to place the ads on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, that algorithm is becoming super twitchy, super twitchy. So we've had people shut down for no reason. And if they do shut down, the only reason I'll give you is you are breaching Facebook ad policies, but that often, they, you know, so, and there's plenty on YouTube, which is like a university of the world to, you know, uh, you know, on this topic, how to avoid getting your Facebook ad shut down. So all Facebook advertisers, whether you're even spending five, we've had people being sh shut down, spending $5 a day and Facebook don't care whether you're spending $5 a day or $50,000 a day. If you breach their ad policies, the algorithm will shut you down. Um, so, I really recommend that anybody who's going to be advertising on Facebook, just Google search Facebook ad policies, go there and read them and then create a diary note to go there every month and reread it because they change it. They, they provide examples. For instance, they've got examples in the weight loss area, you know, of what to, show, you know, fitness and stuff like that, what to show, what not to show. You can't, uh, 
uh, sort of denigrate personal attributes, for instance. You know, so, and uh, so be very, very careful. Um, and just be all, all I want to share on this is to have heads up. Um, and if, if, uh, if in doubt, so here we go. This is the actual website, facebook.com policies forward slash ads. Reread it every month. Now the algorithm checks. Oh, also Steve, the algorithm checks your landing page. So let's sort of stop here. So you've got your Facebook ad. It's going to go to the landing page. That the algorithm, that AI computer, not only looks at your Facebook ad to approve it, before it approves it, it goes to the website that you send people to. If it doesn't look like something on your website, so for instance, the, the algorithm doesn't like pop-ups, which is like an exit pop-up. People go to leave that landing page and say, oh, wait, opt-in, blah, blah, blah. No, that that takes control out of the, con the consumer. So the um, they don't like that. Um, it seems, uh, let me just go back. Um, it seems that um, uh, they like having a little privacy in the home link. So we used to say the landing page is what, is like a squeeze page. There's not a home menu, a blog menu and all that. So there is nowhere to go except opt in or click the back button. Uh, that's typically called a squeeze page. We call it a landing page. But, you know, lately we've been putting, you know, privacy links down the bottom, just, you know, and a home link. They can go to the home um, page. Uh, you know, Facebook will tell you if you've got er errors in your ad before you launch it. So pay attention to those. Uh, and also, I use, I'm somebody that calls for help a lot. I call you, I call Darren, you know, I, I go to the experts. So there's something called the Facebook Business Help Center. So that this is really, really useful and I encourage you to get to know it. And then what I do is I go, um, let's see, you know, scroll down the bottom, see find answers or contact support. Um, and uh, so, you, so you, sorry, excuse me, bouncing around. Um, and you can click that and via Facebook Messenger, uh, you, you know, it might take you a 20 minute wait. And I've been, because um, you can't talk to somebody unless they ring you, but it's very unlikely. Um, but sometimes I've been in Messenger help going through a whole series of questions and, and stuff for like well over an hour. You know, um, and some some better than others, but they will go in, look at your ad, help you, and stuff like that. So it's really good to know that you you can actually dial into Facebook. It's via Messenger, and they'll say, you know, okay, what's your ad and your um, the, whatever, and uh, and they they really are quite helpful. So uh, that's good to know that you that is the method by which you can contact Facebook for help, and that costs you nothing except your own time. So a lot of those, uh, um, when we have those questions, you wonder who to ask. Well, I can't get hold of Jamie at 11 o'clock at night. So all of a sudden, uh, that's good to know. And, and it does actually have a human being talking to you. So Oh, absolutely. They're there on Messenger from, you know, then that, and that is a 24-7 service. So, um, so they, are, they are helpful. And, um, you know, uh, and also if, if a large company, a fitness company is doing a lot of Facebook ads, I mean, the only ads you see are, fa are ads that Facebook approves, so that can give you a bit of a heads up as to what can get approved. Sometimes, from time to time, I am very surprised what gets approved, and sometimes I'm very surprised what gets uh, rejected as well. And, um, you know, so, but that's, that's something to have the heads up for. I remember around about, oh, a good year ago, um, there was one of my clients uh, that was in a specific genre. And he said, uh, let's see, because they were doing quite well in their marketing. So uh, you and I had a bit of a look at their website. We clicked uh, the buttons and so forth, and we could open up nearly all of their ads, just like you showed us before. And mm -hmm. I was actually astounded. You said, oh, gee whiz, they're running 16 ads. No mm -hmm. wonder they're doing well. But gee, there's, there's only about three or four that are working well. Um, it might be either a split test or they forgot about them and they're just trying to uh, saturate the marketplace. And um, I must say that uh, I was absolutely uh, blown away uh, at uh, what you could actually see. And you showed me uh, uh, how to click the details and it showed you everything that they did. And you could actually, you actually did it. Uh, you went and said, well, let's help, let's see how many 
um, engagements they've got here. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you can see which ones were working and which ones weren't. So if they've already got the copy, you can actually take the copy, make it your own, make sure you change it 50%, sure, and, sure. Um, and then do a split. Now, Facebook landing page mm -hmm. versus Google landing page. The difference of the two are Google type landing pages, you have more copy, where Facebook landing type pages um, have, to, uh, have, more, have to have more of a picture. Uh, and then you have that, uh, the click the button to go to mm. the landing page and the copy. Okay, um, no, so I'm just getting a bit confused by your question when you say Facebook landing page versus Google landing page, because uh, a Facebook ad and a Google ad could both go to the same landing page. They could, um, but I've been told the Facebook has, when you put a, uh, 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 the, like the picture for your landing page or whatever, has to have a lot less copy where if you have something just out there um, that's pushed through with Google with AdWords, it goes to uh, maybe your website or whatever the case may be, uh, that ha can have a lot more copy. So I've been told, and that's why I'm asking the question, if you have a Google type of landing page where you're just a separate landing page, it's just on Google can, and uh, it goes on to their site. More copy. Okay, okay and so you've got, you can't have as much copy because it's got to be predominantly a picture. What's your thoughts on that? Okay, so, uh, I, I, and I'm still a little confused, but let me just talk through it. Firstly, people should know that you can have a, a business without a website and you can have a, a virtual website um with google places and people don't take advantage of google places where you can have you know various pages you know uh text blogs videos all that sort of stuff virtually a uh you know a landing page on google now i don't work with that a lot and there's people who know a lot more about that than me um and uh and also you can have you know you really do want to be encouraging, you know, Google reviews, particularly when you've got client success, you know, stimulating them to go give a nice, happy review and stuff like that. Um, I, uh, and, and also with face uh, with Google ads, Google ads tend to be intent based. So, um, Facebook ads tend to be more interruption, you know, like putting the ad in front of you. Um, whereas Google ads, people tend to search and that may change the, flavor of the ad and flavor of the landing page because people are going for a specific intent. Um, so I, I, I'm not sort of black and white. Uh, you know, I don't have a black and white answer to your question. There's probably people like Richard, you know, may have a, a, a more informed uh, answer than I can give you on that. Um, but, but both um, Facebook ads and Google ads can drive to the same landing page. There's probably a good reason to keep it apart. Look, one thing, um, uh, you know, earlier, I, I mentioned the relationship, the communication relationship between the marketer, per, the marketing person who you know has a budget to spend on paid traffic, on ads and things like that, and the salesperson. We know from our sales training a great question to to ask. You, you really always want to ask the source. Oh, if you don't mind me asking, how did you find out about us? You know, or what was it that prompted you to walk in today or to call us today, blah, blah, blah. And they say, oh, I saw this ad on Facebook. Then you can, this is a great opportunity, get some some feedback from sales to give to the marketer. Oh, fantastic. You saw our Facebook ad. We have had just so many calls coming in from that. If you don't mind me asking, what was it about that Facebook ad that meant something to you that said, you know, gee, I, I think I'll contact these guys. A and not only is that giving great feedback to the marketer, you know, what was it that grabbed your attention? But guess what? <laughs> You're finding out as a salesperson what is meaningful to you. You know, they say, oh, you're women only. Is that something that's important to you? Great. <laughs> Love it. So that's <laughs> awesome. That's, uh, you know, also what was it about the ad that grabbed your attention? Bang. That's great. Guys, that's it. That's a, another nugget. So write that down. What that in front, <laughs> Duck, and that's awesome because that gives a, a a connection between the sales and the marketing, and it also gives them something to talk about too. So instead of just saying, "How did you find out about us?" I'll oh, thank you. Move on. I think a question 
about the answer is the key to good communication. So I think that's Absolutely. A great. So actually, the people who should pay attention to what you just said is the questions you ask about their answers, yes. not just the questions. So anyway, so uh, but that's that's you know that's where I think marketing and sales, you know, they are two different silos, but they really need to communicate super super clearly together. So let's. Um, uh, plow on because I'm, I'm just aware of time and people's time and stuff like that. Uh, so let's get to number three, the simple way to double your leads for $5 per day. Darren, do you have a $5 note in your pocket? <laughs> I'll get one right now. No, I it's do. okay. <laughs> oh, you, he does, does he? Do you? <laughs> Next door. As a matter of fact, do you, do you uh, Steve, something you never knew about me, I'm a numismatist, which is I actually do have a coin collection and I do have a pre-decimal note collection. Yeah. I've got like, a $1 uh, uh, note and a $2 note. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, well done. Uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, I've got a, like a one pound note and five pound and 10 pound. Note. So anyway, no big deal. Let's sort of get back to, to, to this, you know, so hopefully operators, even salespeople can do their sums as to what would it mean to their personal income or their business income if they could double their leads for five dollars per day so before you if you're watching this video later i would stop the video and say would it be worth spending five dollars a day to double our leads if we double our leads is a potential we could double our sales or at least increase them by 50%, you know, um, but do your own sums, you know, is it worth investing $5 a day? So, um, so we know, uh, cause we're just talking about, let's look at a typical sales funnel and there's different versions of that. People click your ad, your Facebook ad, your Google ad, whatever like that. They land on a page with your opt-in offer, which is hi, if you want to talk to us about this special offer of, whatever, free consultation, whatever it is, um, uh, get your own weight loss success plan. And they opted in, they put in their name, email and phone number. And let's say you, know, you could have a self booking system where they book into your diary, but let's say uh, you're, you or your salesperson contacts them by phone and they book for a tour, or it might be a Zoom presentation. We're doing a lot of weight loss memberships via Zoom nowadays, you know, into different markets in the different cities and different countries and stuff like that. And they show up for the tour or the Zoom presentation and they join. So let's say that's the typical sales funnel. We call it a sales funnel because it more looks like that. There's a lot more people that click your ad, but not all of them actually land on your page with your opt-in offer. Not everybody opted in. Not everybody contacted by phone. Not everybody booked for the tour. Not everybody showed for the tour. You can So you can see there's a lot of leakage. So the the place to spend five dollars a day if you read this on the right is create a remarketing audience on in facebook ad manager so you need to learn how to do that it's simple um and start ads that nurture these people with value inspiration hero stories and the odd cta cta stands for call to action you know click it to learn more because you want to build no like a trust just think they they were sort of interested enough to click your ad, but they did not give name, email, and phone number. So they didn't know like a trust. They're what's called TOF or top of funnel. Um, it's a cold audience. We want to nurture them, have a process. We don't want to just say, oh, well, piss off or whatever. You, you know, you didn't, you didn't opt in. We're going to ignore you. No, 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 no. You spent good money uh, getting these people to go to your landing page. They're sort of semi-interested. And so Facebook can accumulate, you know, the uh, by pixels, um, an audience of everybody who went to your landing page and tell you about it so that that audience will build up and build up. And just for $2 to $5 per day, you can put content and ads in front of them, you know, so that you are remarketing to them and, uh, uh, and, and get much better value out of your because you might be spending twenty dollars a day or fifty dollars a day on your ads but you've got you know a tiny you know two or three percent click-through rate and um you know we uh 
you know, on our, um, on, on our landing pages, we get, you know, anywhere from a low of 5% to a high of 20% opt-in rate, you know, it depends on, on the ad and the landing page and things like that. So if, if we, if you're getting a 10% opt-in rate, it means you're getting a 90% who are not opting in. Now you want to be able to remarket to those people. Mm. They were interested enough. So the nine out of 10 were interested enough to go to your landing page, but for whatever reason, either they weren't interested enough or the dog barked, the baby cried, the boss came around and said, oh, you're on your mobile phone, what are you doing? And, you know, there's a lot of reasons. We, we, we've got no idea. But so you want to be able to follow them around and um, and remarket. And, and, the, and Facebook make it very easy for you to do this very, very cheaply. And so you want to build up. You don't want to waste your marketing dollars by not remarketing to them. You, you, know, you could do it for two dollars a day or five dollars a day you know let's say ten percent of your ad budget whatever it is um to go back to them it just makes perfect sense but you know what uh how about some remarketing you can do for free so let's show you that because that's even that's exciting as well so you can really get a return on your ad you know investment um so by the way uh jamie uh christina um on your email you sent to me a little uh, uh, last week uh, saying that some of the things in your lockdown uh, that you're experiencing now, uh, which is really making things difficult for you. This is a good uh, for you to listen to now because all of the people that have been to your website and have gone and, and looked before, if you've got the pick school there like Jamie's having, you can now do a bit of nurturing with them. You tell them what to do at home and, 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 and make sure you're not selling to them, but you're caring about them. And you can do this by remarketing to people that have been. So this is a time to nurture and give them some great values to say that you're a human being. So when they can come back to the club, uh, they will. But if you have some online products or services, this will help. So I just wanted to just be direct, because I know Christina has been going through a tough time overseas with the Northern Hemisphere problem, but uh, sure. I wanted to take some a special note here. Okay. I'll let I, you actually, see, uh, look, thanks for mentioning that because um, uh, it's not just your landing page you've got the pixels on, but your whole site, your whole website. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you can remarket, the, you know, of course you, your pixel can accumulate not only people who went to your landing page, but people who went to your home page, yep. everything. And remember we said it's multi-channel people, see around, then they go to the home page. So you can remarket those people and, um, and Facebook even make it easy for you to remove from that remarketing audience, your current clients people have already paid. So you don't have to put the same ads in front of your current clients. So you can ex exclude them. So this is all pretty simple and, and pretty doable. You know, and if, if you do not know how, get a who, who will do it with you for you or whatever like that. Don't waste time. You know, eventually you'll figure out how to, how to do it. You know, I am 68 years, years old. I figured this out, you know, now yeah. I, but I, but people know that I'm a slow coach. I just go slowly, one step at a time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but that's fine. That's no problems. Um, yes, yeah, so Christina just said, time to nurture, time to care. So this is, Jamie just said, as he said, whole website's got pick schools. You can now nurture this through Facebook and these people have been there to go. So watch what he's going to do now. Uh, okay, and just on the nurture, you know, there's a temptation. Oh, well, I'm not going to tell them all that, you know. Uh, I, you know, there'd be no reason for me to actually pay them if they give me all the information because there's a saying, information wants to be free. But I want anybody watching this video, let's say any personal trainer, any business owner who might think like that, and, and I've thought like that in the past, this is a natural feeling. Steve, you are an expert and you sell your information and training, stuff like that. But if Channel 9, like Koshi, you know, on the morning show and 3 million people watch that every day said steve can you come in uh every monday morning for business people for a five or ten minute segment to teach them everything they would need to know about sales we're not going to pay you but you will be a worldwide expert you are going to give them everything for free <laughs> you are yeah just think about it you ain't going to pull back you are going to deliver as much damn value as you possibly can 
um, because you've got that incredible audience. You don't even have a way to monetize it. You, know, you just said yes before you even thought, how am I going to make money out of this? You didn't even think about that, but you are going to go there and you are, as Victor Brick says, you're going to give them your A game. You know, you are going to, you are going to practice drill rehearse. You're going to, you know, each, you'll probably do that all, all weekend, knowing that that five or 10 minute segment potentially is really super value, not by holding back, but by giving a lot. Because when people give a lot, people say, how do I figure out how to pay this bloke something, you know, to buy something from him, you know? They really do. So uh, I just wanted to share that thought. With that, and that's a mindset thing, isn't it? So the, here, now let's get to the free audience because we've got um, the other people who did opt in. So you got people who opt in, um, but you didn't contact by phone because you tried phone screening, they never picked up or whatever like that. Or people you got on the phone but they didn't book for a tour or a consultation or a Zoom appointment or whatever like that. And then people who did book for a Zoom appointment, and by the way, if you do contact them on the phone, you can say, hey, can you come to the club right now? Or you got time and we'll you know, bring up Zoom and we'll go through it right now. So, you know, um, and then you've got people who booked in but did not show for the tour or the appointment or the Zoom. Um, and then people who did show but did not join. So you've got four audiences there, people who opted in, contacted, booked, and showed but did not join and you can remarket to them by email again it's the same process nurture value inspiration hero stories the odd call to action you know build that no build that no like and uh you know you know and trust and um you know so uh yeah did you see that on the screen sorry was i sharing that yeah have a look yeah no i'm back to you now so Anyway, so you can do it. So you can remarket um, by via Facebook. You can remarket via AdWords, and you can remarket via email. I think it's to actually <clears throat> make sure that you rekindle the lead with. Uh, it's not just uh, buy now, buy now, buy now. There's got to maybe be. It's got to be uh, as someone said to me um, numerous times. I only just got it a little while ago. Um, have a story involved have a story mm -hmm. of some success or something that you did, uh, humanize it and oh, then yeah. it makes a big difference. So nurture that process by humanizing, by putting a story. And as I said, if you told to me for, for, for a year or two by now, I just clicked the other day. So uh, um, I'm sure everyone out there is a lot cleverer than me. <laughs> sure. And, you know, uh, if you want to read about stories, um, you know, there's a fantastic book called Story Brand. You can listen to it on audio or you just go watch Star Wars, you know, because you, you've got the hero, you got the villain and you've got the victims. So there's three players, the hero, the villain and the victors, you know, victims. So the victims are people that are getting crap information or losing weight or like that. You know, the villain is um, might be time or uh, your crappy food or like that. And you've got the hero. So um, so it's it's a great way to create stories that are compelling. And if you look at, you know, go to any Netflix crime series or like that, yeah, you know, you got hero, you got the villain, and then you got the victim. And and that's a way to construct a story that is compelling. Nice. Now, Steve, we've shared a lot of things. Can I now share a shameless plug? Go for it. I'd love you to. <laughs> <laughs> I want to have a uh, people to actually have a who. So I think you're, you're a, okay. Cindy, for have a who. So, but, but but before we do, I just just to make sure that people got that last slide. I wasn't too sure. So this is the free stuff. This is you can remarket via email. So you can put in the screen dump of that. You know, which is remarketing people who opted in but didn't get contacted. People who got contacted but didn't get booked. People who got booked but didn't show. People who showed but did not join. And, and so. Uh, in addition to remarketing on Facebook or Google Ads, you can remarket these via emails, not by saying bye, 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 by delivering value. Imagine you are the person on the Koshi show and you're delivering value, you know, and I think weekly is a, a good way to go. Now, so now I've got shameless plug, okay? <laughs> That's a shameless plug. So if you operate a fitness business, health business and you are open to additional ways of building direct debit income you know dd or eft as they say in the states uh, protecting against future lockdowns and gee if you're in victoria right now you know and even new zealand's gone to stage two but they can be open um 
you know, so you can keep income going during lockdowns and also keep your team on the payroll, you know, so that they're working, whether it's, they may not even be able to come center, but they can work from home, then get into touch. It's simply jamie at diplex.com.au. So Steve, uh, that's all I've got for you guys. And wow. obviously people can reach out anytime. Um, with any questions, you know, I learn more from you guys than you learn from me, I can assure you. Mate, uh, and Jamie, you've got you've got the SAC quarterly coming up, haven't you? That's right, on the uh, on the 26th, uh, a lot of soft skills and um, a lot of leadership skills that, that dovetails. I believe uh, selling is leadership in general anyway. So when we oh, absolutely about, uh, how to sell something, it's really just having a good conversation with a positive outcome. So that could yeah. be with leading people. So it's going to be awesome. I'll be on the 26th. Uh, but, you know, so Steve, I, I'm just staggered how many businesses, when it comes to, you know, they do not have a sales system, they just wing it. They just wing it. And uh, be it in real estate, in fitness, you know, how we answer the phone around here, they don't have a system or a training system. They just wing it. And they leave so much money on the table. They, so much money on the table, you know. So uh, that, that, that's sack cordially um, for, you know, and, don't just send your salespeople. The CEO should attend, you know, say, holy shit, you know. <laughs> and, 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 and managers should not get, get angry at salespeople for not following the systems that the managers didn't create or buy and get them trained in. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's the manager's fault you know, or, the, or the owner's fault. And if you don't have a sales manager, the owner is by default the, the sales manager. You know, if you don't have a... Ma you know, a marketing person, the owner by default is their marketer. It's true. And there are a lot of people juggling a lot of things and sometimes just focusing on one thing. And uh, a friend of mine sent me a video yesterday on Brian Tracy. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and the I, know who, I know who your friend is. <laughs> you know, he's very well. And um, <laughs> the first thing he said, he said uh, he's helped people, entrepreneurs become incredibly wealthy and so forth. And the one thing that the three gurus that he was talking to all said almost simultaneously was focus. And uh, focus on, creates on the important stuff. Focus on the important stuff. Focus on the important, important stuff. Mm -hmm. And focusing on marketing for a period of time, if you're a solopreneur, you've got to get that right. You've got to focus on it. And then you focus on the conversion. The problem is you try to do marketing and sales at the same time, you go into massive uh, creator block and you get uh, nothing done. So that's why you've got to reach out to a who. And um, I strongly recommend everybody uh, to reach out to Jamie as the who in this area. He has a wealth of information and um, take him up on the offer, have a conversation. He's got lots of things to uh, share, but he also has a system in place. And I uh, unashamedly say, uh, uh, you are my confidant, the person I go to. And uh, for many, many years, Jamie, a great, great dear friend, but also a professional that uh, is of high uh, regard. So I really appreciate all your time you have uh, in helping. So, you, so you're, not, you're not saying that just because we're both Aquarians? No, 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 that's... Uh, <laughs> The Aquarians are, will stick together, but we got to make sure that we uh, talk, talk the truth. And uh, you certainly walk the talk, Jamie. You're not one of these guys that sit back and uh, say, oh, this is a good idea, but I don't do it. You you certainly walk the talk. And um, I just can't, uh, I, I want to make sure that everybody takes you up on that opportunity because um, it'll help them and it will sure. help also help you. And, and marketers who are confident in their sales conversion become better marketers. You know, they... They're willing to put money on the table because they know that you know they've got the sales system, the sales funnel all nailed, and they're measuring it and constantly improving it. And you know they've got the people train. What's what's the saying? Uh, it's nothing. There's nothing worse than training people and having them leave than not training them and having them stay. <laughs> That's so true. Well, with that, my friend, uh, thank okay. you so much with uh, all that wonderful. Uh, information on on how to make sure you use five dollars but also spy on our competitors ethically and i'm sure that a lot of people will get out there and have a look at it today and um guys uh, i want to say a big uh, thank you to uh if you're turning up today christina all the way over in uh, portugal joey in um lockdown in uh, melbourne darren in south australia we've got a plethora of people here today so thanks for coming in today but uh, a great big thank you to jamie to not doing all your exercise making sure you did your pdr <laughs> today and putting it to bed outstanding i really appreciate thanks, it thanks steve a lot of fun guys we do these 
presentations, workshops, trainings to make sure that you are going to do. It's no good listening to the great people and not taking action. Take one or two or three things from what Jamie was talking about today. Put it into action. Go on there, type it in there, have a look. Don't say do it tomorrow because I have a little saying, best do it now, save some time tomorrow. Action is everything. Let's kick some goals and we'll see you next time. I'm Steve Jensen, Dr. J. We'll see you soon. Bye for now. Thank you.